up in the program, we have Miris Holding, and here to present the company is CEO Camila Sanberry. Welcome, Camila. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's great to be here uh, and to be able to take you through a little bit of the insights of Miris and what we're doing. So uh, Miris is a company which was um, established in 2001 and uh, we became public uh, in 2006. Our headquarters is in Uppsala and we're about, we're 10 uh, people now, 10 employees. Our main focus uh, is all around the Midis Human Milk Analyzer, which is basically an instrument to analyze the nutritional content in breast milk. Uh, the instrument was launched in 2006 and has been a medical device in Europe since then. Um, and we even achieved FDA registration by the end of 2018. Uh, and I can also just quickly mention that this is the only uh, human milk analyzer which is available for clinical use in the world. We have about 400 instruments uh, installed globally. We work on a global basis uh, with all countries. Uh, our key markets are neonatal intensive care units, milk banks and also research centers. So, why do you need to analyze breast milk? Um, there, is a, there is a known fact that breast milk is the best nutrition for both full-term babies and also uh, preterm babies. Uh, the challenge is that the um, uh, concentration of, uh, of nutrients in breast milk will vary quite a bit between mothers, but also for one mother. Um, if the baby is full term, this will kind of um, mimic the baby's needs. But when you're born prematurely, you have such a high need for nutrition that the breast milk will usually not have enough nutrition in it. Um, what what uh, that challenge will do is that you will have either, mostly undernutrition for the baby or even overnutrition, which again have, uh, can have quite severe clinical effects for the baby. Now, many neonatal intensive care units will give standard fortification, so they know that the breast milk maybe has not enough uh, nutrition, so they add extra nutrition to, to the milk but they don't really know exactly how much uh, nutrition is in the milk from the beginning. So again, you either have too little or too much. And so Miri's solution to this issue is basically that before you fortify the milk, you analyze it, which means that you will get exactly the concentration of uh, protein, fat and carbohydrates in the milk and you can then easily calculate exactly how much you need to add to the milk uh, for the baby to grow at the right pace. Not too slow and not too fast. And this will eliminate, uh, eliminate a lot of the possible challenges you can get. Now, this is done in Sweden uh, as a standard of care in Swedish neonatal intensive care units, but not in the rest of the world. And so this is kind of Miri's mission to ensure that all NICUs all around the world are using this method of a target fortification to provide for their premature born babies. Um, here you can see our product portfolio. So it's all uh, revolving around the instrument itself in the frontier. Um, then we have two instruments for sample prep. It's a heater that heats up all the liquids that needs to go into the instrument. And then we have an ultrasonic processor, which is homogenizing the milk before you inject it into the instrument. We have uh, three consumables. It's a calibration control, which basically is a QC test to see that the calibration of the instrument is good. So this is something you do every day you start the instrument. And we have a uh, check solution and also a cleaning solution for the instrument. Uh, on top of this, we have uh, over the last years developed different types of service agreements also to um, ensure that the customers have their 
the best service uh, for their instruments. Now, I think it's important to uh, explain a little bit about um, the lifetime of MIRIS. Since uh, the company started in 2001, it actually started with a, uh, an instrument for analysis of dairy milk, so a DMA, uh, which was used uh, in the field to um, measure nutritional content in dairy milk, basically. Uh, in 2006, um, when Miris launched the breast milk analyzer or human milk analyzer, uh, it was based on a professor, a professor from Lund University who was working with um, uh, premature babies and was very much interested in being able to look at the nutritional content. Uh, before the Miris instrument, it was not possible to do that. You had to do uh, chemical analysis, which is very cumbersome and not possible to put into a clinical setting, basically. Uh, so the company worked with both instruments for quite many years. Uh, in 2014, work started on updating the quality of the Kivet itself. And based on that work, it was possible for us then in the beginning of 2017 to start kind of a more um, process of commercializing the, uh, the company in a little bit of a different way. So um, we have over the last five years worked really hard with the understanding the market, becoming the, uh, building up the brand. So we are today seen as the experts when it comes to human milk analysis. We have a worldwide network. We have gone from um, uh, selling instruments to actually becoming a real med tech company selling a clinical application, which is a big leap. <laughs> um, we have optimized our product portfolio, both to streamline it, to develop new consumables, and even to push the margins, margins as, uh, as much as we can to increase revenues. Um, when we received the FDA approval end of 2018, it even First of all, it, it's the first instrument that has been approved in the US and it opened up a very important market for the for Miris uh, when it comes to commercializing the whole product line. Um, and with the increased market knowledge, um, there is nobody above and nobody uh, next to us uh, in, in this field. Uh, and for today, we actually don't have any competitors. This can change, but today we don't have any competitors. So based on all this knowledge we have uh, accomplished over the last five years, uh, we last year um, launched a kind of a next step, strategical steps that we wanted to take and which we have worked um, on since then. Um, and this is based on all the uh, knowledge we have um, gathered. Um, we have come to the conclusion that we need to do a next generation of the instrument. The technology in the instrument today, it works, but it's, it's quite old. And uh, at some point we need to expect to have competitors and we need to have a technology that can compete with uh, others um, of technologies that comes out today. Um, in this uh, update of next generation of an instrument, we even need to be able to build in a business, a new business model. And I'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. Um, we want to broaden the product, product portfolio. So we have the instrument the analysis itself. Next step would be most likely to look at how can we come into the area of doing the actual calculation when you have your results from the instrument. How do you calculate uh, in an easy way what to actually add to the milk to get the right target fortification. Um, with becoming a med tech company, we need to follow all uh, regulatory and uh, uh, quality um, rules and regulations. So we're updating with the ISO 13385 and also the technical files to follow all regulatory demands. And with all this, we need to strengthen our organization, obviously. Um, just um, very quickly, um, 
a little bit about the business model, and this is quite important. Today we have a market size that we um, um, see as around three to four billion Swedish krona. And this is based on a five year cycle where, where the instrument itself is quite expensive, but then the consumables are low cost, so cost per analysis is quite low. Um, this makes it a little bit harder to get into the hospitals because it's capital equipment. Budgeting takes up to one to two years to get the budget for the instrument. But then you have the instrument, the cost is really low, so that's good for the customer in a way. Uh, the problem for us is that we want more revenue on each customer uh, to ensure that we have um, a bigger return. Um, and this is something we want to build in with the next instrument uh, so that the instrument itself don't need to be so expensive. We want to focus on the um, revenue per analysis. So each analysis will have a higher cost for the customer. Now, this is a, quite a common uh, way of building your business model when it comes to uh, different types of analysis. So it's something that the, uh, the hospitals are used to seeing. And it's more kind of for us to be able to build it in, in the next instrument so that we can uh, grow in the right way. And uh, sorry, this also means uh, that our market size will almost triple when, when we are able to move into this new business model. All right, so just a little bit of where we are, where we're moving forward. Uh, what we're seeing, so as I said earlier, uh, Sweden is the only uh, co uh, country in the world that where target fortification and analysis then is um, standard of care. And we're trying to convince the rest of the world of the same thing. And um, this is something that is not done in a year or two or three. It's, it's taking a long time, but at the same time, we see movement in the market. And, and it's uh, great to see how um, how the market is now starting to respond. Uh, we, just as an example, now that we're back in the US on conferences, we can see the difference in how, the, how uh, potential customers are approaching us, that everybody knows about the importance of nutrition now. So it's not uh, no more a need to uh, convince people that nutrition is important for premature babies. Now it's more a matter of how do I get it into my clinic? How does it work in the clinic? Because that's not easy when you don't have this process in the clinic from the beginning. But still, it, we see a lot of uh, movement. For example, we sell more instruments. So about 10 uh, clinical studies is, is, all, uh, is ongoing at uh, neonatal intensive care units in the US. And even if it takes a long time for the studies to be published, uh, on the way, uh, our customers, some of them have already started to talk about their results at conferences. And this is the best marketing we can get uh, when, when our customers are really showing the results they're getting and that they're having positive results. Uh, in addition to that, we see a rippling effect in the market, especially in the US, that when you have one hospital in an area that um, implement our instrument, uh, their neighbors will start um, talking to us and asking for quotes, etc. And again, it's peers talking to peers, which is also great marketing for us. Um, so that means that our customers becomes our references and it's not only potential customers that we reach out to that will um, will ask for quotes it's even uh, potential customers that we have never talked to which is uh, a big difference from earlier so as you can see here uh, we now have uh, we covered 25 percent of the milk banks in the us i'm talking a lot about us here because this is the biggest market potential we have for the moment we cover almost six percent of the high level NICUs in the us and uh, it's about 700 NICUs that would need our instrument, so we have a long way to go, but it's, uh, it's a good start at least. Um, also wanted to mention that we had an order for eight instruments to Poland uh, in Q4 last year. Um, so almost all milk banks in Poland have our instrument now, uh, and it's um, 
looked at as the golden standard for, for all mail banks in Poland. Um, a few numbers from last year. Uh, we had our best annual sales um, of all time for Miris, uh, and even the best quarter, Q4 uh, last year, uh, which is really um, amazing. Uh, and we're very excited about this. Um, and again, it reflects what we talked about for a while, that we see changes. And this is in the midst of COVID-19, which is obviously um, affecting our customers, the hospitals, quite a bit. So, so we see this as a big achievement. The sales increase was 41%. Uh, the number of instruments delivered 74, uh, sorry, it was 74% up. Sales increase was 41%. Uh, in consumables, we increased with 36%, and the gross margin is also a new record, 72% for the uh, product portfolio. We also did a um, rights issue last year, which was oversubscribed, ended at uh, 33.4 million Swedish krona uh, before issue costs. Thank you so much for your presentation, Camilla. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to latch on to your last uh, slide there when you talk about your strong sales performance. Could you talk a little bit about your sales strategy and uh, how do you keep up with the, the momentum going forward? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, we will continue our work uh, as we've done for a while. Now much more on the ground uh, since we're out uh, since we're able to start traveling again. Uh, but it's all about uh, uh, education. It's about meeting uh, potential customers. Um, it's about having seminars. It's about um, social media uh, and making our statement out there. Um, I think since this is a new um, clinical process mm -hmm. for most NICUs, it's very important to educate and to explain how this can be done in an easy way. And we have um, an extremely competent team that mm -hmm. know how to talk to a clinical uh, audience, basically, which makes a huge difference. Um, and we will continue this. And obviously, also, we have quite a lot of distributors that we're working with also. Um, but same as, uh, at the same time as we're uh, building the market ourselves, we're uh, ensuring that whatever our customers are performing, we can get that out there as well, because that's kind of the best marketing we can get. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I also wanted to ask you about the competitive landscape. You, mm -hmm. you mentioned that you currently don't have any competitors, mm -hmm. but uh, you may see a shift in the landscape soon. Uh, how are you preparing for that? Yeah, so I think uh, developing the next generation is really the biggest uh, form of uh, pre preparation we can do for that. Because, I mean, w really, we don't have any uh, competitors today. We there are a few instruments that are used for deer milk analysis that some places are using for, uh, for their breast milk analysis, mm -hmm. but that's basically not allowed to do mm -hmm. in a clinical setting. So, so um, I think um, the best thing we can do is preparing by um, to oversee that we actually get a technology in place that can, that can compete with any other technology that is developed today, basically. Mm -hmm. oh. Absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much for answering the questions and for your presentation, and we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you.